try to catch a big catfish. Really nice fall morning out here. We're not at the dam today, we're on a lake, but the dam aren't, none of the dams in Oklahoma where I live at are running water right now, so we're going to try to catch some catfish lakeside. Shouldn't be any pleasure boaters out here, it's a weekday. And uh, let's see if we can get some bait. We'll just throw it up underneath this dock right here. Oh, something already took our bait. We need to make that a little bit smaller. Or I guess we could have used a little bit bigger hook. We're just using a 32nd ounce jig head and shooting it up underneath this dock right here by the boat ramp. Uh, that wasn't a very good cast. Anyhow, neither was that. We'll get it underneath there eventually. There we go. It's up underneath there. Got him. Just like that, folks. <clears throat> that right there, that's a premium catfish bait. I'd rather have a crappie, but that guy right there will do the job too. Oh shoot, that was a good one. And there ain't nothing wrong with this, folks. This right here is fine. It's hard to get away from catching the bait once you uh, get on a good, good school of fish like this. Perch or whatever. Light tackle. They're stacked up underneath there and it's freaking fun. I don't care who you are. This guy right here will do it. Alright, we'll catch a couple more and then uh, we'll get out there and go catfishing. How about it? should do what we need to do and if we if we need more we know where they're stacked up we'll just come back and get some more I was sitting here waiting to get a bite on one of these catfish rod, but I seen bass pushing those shad up on the rocks. And so I got me a little shad imitation out. I got me out a little, uh, I got me out a uh, fluke, a white fluke. Looks like a shad. I was using it weightless and I just let it hit the water and I'd wait for about five or 10 seconds. And then I, after about five or 10 seconds, I'd give it a twitch and, uh, It'll just dart back and forth through the water, looking like a dying bait fish. And but <coughs> I seen this guy all morning sitting over there bullying those shad, and I figured I'd pick on him a little bit. He ain't too bad, one pound bass. He broke up the monotony of sitting here not catching nothing else. I'll tell you that. Anyway, there he goes. Let's see if I can show you guys what this looks like. I don't know if it'll pick up on that camera or not. And again, that was on six pound test crappie, crappie line. And, uh, but anyways, you can see it in the water and I'll just give it a pop every now and then. It looks like a dying shad. And uh, if they're schooling shad and they're pushing them up on the rocks, like over there on that bank, every now and then you'll see them, they'll start rushing them and the schools of shad will be flipping over those rocks trying to get away from them. You can just tear one up like that. You know, they're already eating bait fish. So if you put something out there that looks like a dying bait fish, something they might have injured, you can catch one. Let's see if we can do it again. One of those bass rushing uh, those shad again. So I made a cast over there to him. Let's see if we can't get him on this cast.
that last bass t-boned it One of the times I actually wished I had a bass rod on my boat, I missed one a minute ago. I don't, you don't have the hook sitting power with the crappie rod that far away. And I'm launching that sucker out there up against some rocks and... Yeah, don't have no hook sitting power from back here. You have to reel and set the hook at the same time. You know, with a good bass rod, you just reel down and then set the hook and you'll get them. Not with the crappie rod. Not so, not that far out anyways. Let's see if you guys can see what that looks like. I don't know if you guys can see that way out there or not with the glare on the water. Actually, it ain't too bad right now. Just looks like a dying something. Wouldn't quite say it looks like a shed, and then it just shimmies down like a like a wet rack, racky, wacky rig worm. It just kind of flutters, and when you're twitching it, you get a little cadence going. One, two, three. Then you just let it fall, and it dives off to the side like that. Those freaking bass go crazy over that. <clears throat> him see that one's bit he's already bit my lure three times i just i don't have no hook setting power from back here we're gonna yeah we're gonna make the hook exposed this time we're gonna try it again we're not fishing down in the weeds or off the bottom so it shouldn't really matter You just get your little cadence going one two three then let it set you could do one two three four then one two three and just keep switching it back and forth whatever you feel comfortable with you'll find something probably the first cadence you catch fish on is the one you'll stick with from now on that's usually how it works it seems like just let it fall All right, I'll get back with you guys when I start seeing these bass pushing shad again. I'll get back. Well, as the saying goes, if you find the birds, you'll find the fish. Uh, I think I found plenty of birds. I don't know how well you guys can see all of them, but there's like, I don't know, probably 200. And then there's probably 25 or 50 more right there. And then they're just scattered about the lake right here. So I haven't caught a catfish today. And what I'm gonna try to do is uh, I'm just gonna drift back. I'm gonna set my bait a couple feet off the bottom and just let my boat, let the wind carry the boat and just see if I can get a fish. Uh, we tried everything else and it hasn't worked so we might as well give that a go. Might as well. I finally think we got one folks be hard to tell until we get this bobber up here it's a big old bobber so something had it dunked oh we got something on there we got something oh we got a catfish oh come on now don't go that way don't go that way of course he would do that right into my other freaking bobber 
about the way it goes. Oh. Thirty foot of water, people. Just letting the wind carry us across the lake half a mile an hour. That's how I like to set my jug lines. On the other end of my fishing pole. Anyway, there he is. He might actually get to go free. Thinking about eating him. I got some bluegill in there. Yeah, we're gonna take this sucker home, you know? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh. I saw sand bass busting on some shad and I thought I would throw for some and see what happened, but uh, as soon as you turn your back on your uh, as soon as you turn your back on your bobbers, that's usually when they go down. Alright, I'll do a video on those bobbers one of these days. I get them really cheap, I buy them at Atwoods. And then I go get those uh, big foam noodles from Walmart. And, uh... When I get them, I like to uh, get some two-part epoxy from uh, Harbor Freight and just put them on there. Uh, I wish I had more with me. You can see that one. I just got the float out there itself. I haven't got a chance to make up some more. And But I do like these a lot because uh, you can just stab a glow stick down in the foam. And you can see them at night. And uh, Yeah, they're pretty good. They're handy to have around. Anyway, I'll get with you guys when I get another pick.